This episode of This Week in Web Design is brought to you by Hiscox. Go to HiscoxUSA slash small biz for your business insurance needs. Today on This Week in Web Design, we're going to review the architecture of the This Week in website. We're going to show you how we plan and prioritize features with our clients using this amazing art bin that I have here on my right and Sink or Swim. We're going to help our viewer, Jason Perrier, on the redesign of his logo for Sky Crew. Stick around, watch us work. Welcome to episode numero 33. I am your host, Jose Cavalier. I'm forgetting my own name, Chief Creative Officer of the group. Every week you watch us work here on web design projects and currently, if you haven't been watching, we are doing a live website redesign of the This Week in Network. Joining me today is our guest expert, Victoria Herrick, who is a producer at ad agency David and Goliath and is awesome. And as always, Ari Guimon, who uh, you see here every week on the show. Ari, a lot of really great uh, feedback in response to the live wireframe. That's framing. awesome. That's awesome. People love it when we uh, when we do stuff. Noticed. And because of that, we're just going to do stuff today, and I don't want to talk a lot about it. People commented that you were very fast. How can you comment during the show? Please questions. There's a, a many many ways. One of them is to use Twitter. It's the one that I'm the most responsive to. At Jose Cavalier, at Jose Cavalier on my Twitter. Sometimes it does come up here below me like magic. And also, in addition to that, you can actually use our This Week in Web Design uh, Twitter, which our producer Ryan can tell yeah, us. What is it? At This Week in Web. This Week in Web. It's so simple that I, I'm forgetting it. So I just got back from uh, the South, from Tennessee, so I'm, I'm pretty jet lagged. So today's mm. show is going to be fun. But I got to say, I do like the South. We were doing a pitch there, and uh, I, don't, I would not mind getting it, A, because it's an awesome company, B, because I would see myself hanging out and the spending South a weekend. The South is awesome. In, yeah, awesome. Take a yeah. weekend out from being there and go rent a Harley and ride around and have some barbecue <laughs> chicken. Nice. Ribs. I had, barbecue I had, ribs. I don't eat meat, so I, 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 I actually broke that to eat some uh, barbecue chicken yesterday. I really? Know, I was hungry. I was really hungry. And it was a beautiful location. It was Listen awesome. to the by blues. By the river. By the river. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Have you, you, you like it. You know what? You, I think you liked the Civil War. Uh, you know the Civil War era and all that. I mean, I think it's. <laughs> you like? I know. No, no, no. The romanticism of it. The romanticism of it. The romanticism of it. It's traditional values. It's traditional values. Okay. About. The point. What we talked about before the show is that we are from the Latin America. We're from Latin America. It's very similar. Very much so. The family very values. Family friendly. Very everybody's friendly. hey, como Everybody's ta? super polite. You know? Everybody's super polite. It's funny. We were yeah. commenting like when I go back home now, my mom always has to remind me like, why don't you say hi to people on the street? And I'm like, wow, I got to get out of this mode of like being in the big city. And You, you said know, hello just... to me right by the bathroom. Well, no, I'm I talking about strangers. Strangers. <laughs> strangers. strangers it, it is a very different culture, and it very is very nice friendly. Yeah. Um, so to review what we're going to do today, and, and it's up on the board here. If we do a wide shot of me. Uh, it's like right here. Oh, wait, 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 right there. Bing. Uh, we're going to review the architecture. Sorry, if you can bring up on your monitor Absolutely. where we're at, um, that would be great. And something I want to ask again, and I'm going to keep on harping you every, every single week. Yes. You're doing Insurance. a lot of projects. Yeah, Have I, you gotten... I got his hugs this week. You did? Yeah, I did. Awesome. Yeah. So if you guys mm. don't know, we've been talking about this, one of our sponsors. As a web designer, as a consultant, do you have consulting insurance? Right. For web specifically. And one of the few, actually the only uh, insurance company that I've seen that has us as a category versus like, uh, you know, IT or something like that, right. IT consultants, is his, Hiscox Insurance. Right. And let's actually run that video for uh, our audience and talk about insurance right at the beginning of, of the segment. So and I was on Jason's show the other day, and we were talking about insurance. And um, interesting topic for us as web designers. Do you, do you happen to have web insurance? Um, you know, I'm starting to hear about it, yeah. Um, I, I think I definitely should get it. Um, it's something that a lot of us don't know, and as a creative, we don't realize. But for our audience specifically, uh, if you you might have a, a situation where you will need consulting insurance, it will come up guaranteed. If you get successful, if you grow, if you have a lot of clients, it will happen. It saved my ass to have insurance, uh, to have business insurance. Something that I early on figured out I needed to get while I was going through all my kind of research when starting the company in 2001. Um, and, and this is pretty awesome that this is now available. Uh, there's an insurance company that actually provides insurance for web designers specifically, uh, which is something that I haven't seen before and it's pretty awesome. Uh, you had to figure it out, like, you know, IT consulting under this, and it was kind of a little bit of a mumbo jumbo. Is it expensive? Uh, so that's a really good question. Actually, professional liability insurance starts at $2,250 per month. Wow, that's pretty good. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's very 
very, very awesome. It's called Hiscock Insurance, and they focus on small business insurance, and they have a category specifically for web designers. Uh, it's also the first company in the U.S. that you can buy insurance from directly online. So let me show you real quick, uh, which is actually pretty, pretty cool and in, pretty interesting. So if we switch over to my monitor here, um, we can actually see uh, the website, and I'm at the small business section, and I think they have IT here. And when you click on IT, uh, you go to um, here, and you can actually select very specifically, and I'm typing it in right here, you have web design, which is pretty awesome that they actually categorize that. Nice looking site. What do you think of the site? Looks good. So it looks clean. Very Apple-like. Definitely a swim. Very, <laughs> definitely a swim. That's a good point. Um, so again, um, they focus on small business insurance. Hiscox focuses on small business insurance and has a category just for you, just for web designers. It's also the first company in the US where you can buy your insurance directly online. I wish I had that. You don't have to leave your office, which is actually a little bit nerdy, but that's OK. So go to Hiscox USA slash small business to request a quote. Again, go to HiscoxUSA at H-I-S-C-O-X-U-S-A.com, small biz, to request a quote. Again, don't forget to go to the site and check it out. Ari, how difficult was it? It was not difficult at all. Super easy and cheap, which is great. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so let's move right into the preview of the architecture. Ari, yep. can you bring up on your monitor the... I've got the same documents the same that we documents were working from last, on last week. week. So what we did last in the last episode was we, uh, brain, we whiteboarded and based on where we are uh, with, the, with the workbook and, uh, and people were able to see us, the thinking process that we went through in order to get some of the decisions that we did. Right. Uh, and there's some that are, that are still missing. Uh, some things are still missing, but today what we're going to do is we're going to help prioritize that. And let's update this. So Absolutely. comments, what, what did we want to do to this? We wanted so to make it gray. So there was one thing that we wanted to do, and I actually I put all those black blocks on one layer, so I can just go ahead and click here on this little button and select all of them. And right here above you, and it's cool that my hand fits in there. That's awesome. You have uh, the, uh, the group school, uh, like right there. Look there at that. Right it's there. And it's, it's bit.ly uh, bit slash group school 2 uh, for more information. And the reason why I, I'm pointing out at that other than it's funny, it's kind of like uh, kids in the hall when they would shrink you people. Can, like, I'm uh, your head. Actually, that guy Dave lives in, in the building I used to live in, in oh, downtown by our that's office. Funny. Uh, anyway. Um, the reason I'm pointing it out is because everything that we're doing here on the show today, and the entire portion of this is information architecture related, feature prioritization, and even a summary of the workbook and what we've done to date in the last six, seven episodes, we're doing during group school. Right. So we're, we're going to focus a group school process. on information yeah. architecture and, and, and user experience and some design at the end, but not, not as much as the information architecture. That, that is nearly... You know, it, there, there are not a lot of places where you can. There are places where you can get that. There's not that many, but you get to do it with us over a weekend. You're going to be there right. on one of the days. You're providing a lot of value. It's a lot of value, yeah. and it's not that expensive. If you go to it, if you're a viewer of the show, uh, if you're a producer of the show, you're going to get several discounts. So go to go to Bitly uh, slash Group School Two, Bitly slash Group School Two, and check that out. And let's get back into this. But th that's a really awesome opportunity to work with us live. We might do it in New York. Somebody asked us if uh, we can do it on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. We're excited. Very nice. I love New York. Uh, and I love Tennessee. So we can do it somewhere in the South and somewhere in the East. So right here, um, let's go to the review again. Let's turn right. those gray. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the one thing that I wanted to do to this is just basically, you know, just grab all those black blocks and turn them gray. So what are you working in here? Illustrator. Illustrator, okay. And so that's simply because I'm, I use it a lot and I'm used to it. But, okay. But uh, you can use whatever tool you're comfortable with, you know. Pencil and paper, even. Um, and the reason I wanted to turn these gray is because it makes it look incomplete, and that's kind of what you want. Okay. And we've been talking a little bit about using, you know, something like um, uh, uh, balsamic, balsamic, which makes which it look right. cloud. It's in the cloud, so and it's yeah. actually pretty cool. Right. And uh, this morning I was going through balsamic again and reviewing a project. Um, something that I well, go ahead and do that and turn them gray, and let's yep, start look, translating the site map that we did last week. Right. And I'm going to look for something that I want to share with with our audience. So here I'm starting to work on the site map. I've got these little boxes. I'm actually using a screenshot of the episode from last week to kind of reference what we need. So what I'm basically doing is I'm creating these little boxes that represent a page, and I'm numbering them. And the reason for numbering them is that you want to basically follow that convention all the way through. So anytime you look at a design or anything like that, you can always refer back to this site map and say, oh, we're looking at page number, you know, home, which is code zero, zero, or whatever. 
So is that home, do you want to put the ca all the top low layer below it? Yep. So home yep. is above by on its own. What's oh, this is actually I duplicated this. So this was actually the assessment that goes like over here. And you're doing one that's horizontal. I got it. there. You go. Yeah. Got and it. that'll keep people from calling it different names also when you Absolutely. number it because you know how everyone has the their own the language, right. you yes. know, their own slang. That is exactly right. It's interesting because one of the things that I've, over time in anything, you know, it's funny that if you don't do the system at the beginning, if you don't, it's like Buddhism. It's not really necessary about the what you do. It's just the practice on an ongoing basis. And, and, and I'm saying that for a reason, because not doing this, not putting the numeric system and not doing a site map and then doing an index of what pages you're going to do, or like a backlog of pages, et cetera. Um, at the beginning, and then having to, once the site gets really big and right. really complex, I think that's key. It, it everything starts breaking down over here simply because of something that you didn't do here at the right. beginning. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So it's almost like it's about faithfulness. It's about doing it every time in a way that's predictable. Being methodical. Being methodical, yeah. taking the time versus doing what I would naturally do as a creative. Ooh, let's make some pages. You want to get right. You want to get into yeah. it. So Buddha used wireframes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buddha for sure. Is it the Keanu Reeves movie? Well, well, while Ari's doing those, <laughs> it's under a tree with balsamic. Well, well that, bals that balsamic's a great name for a product. Um, they should start paying us uh, for us uh, <laughs> mentioning it so many times. So, so again, the hierarchy is the homepage is at the top. I like to actually make the homepage, you know, the outline a little thicker, yep. just so that you can see that that's a priority. Um, again, 0, 0.0, then 1.0. Why are those numbers like that? Because then the subpages below it are going to be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and then if there's sub sub pages of something which I we try not to do, but there there might be. You have then you know page 1.2. Uh, 1.2, 1, 1.2, 3, 1.2. So it's a, it's I think a, what you said is key. You know, at the beginning it seems so easy because there's so few pieces, but as it starts growing and as it starts growing, like those little things that you missed at the beginning kind of come back and bite you, and you're like, oh. And, and it's too, that's what gives you a headache. Yeah. Like my, my goal is, I remember when I started the group one time, I was doing a really big project. Information architecture was an issue, and it, it was really big. Um, and I was getting these, uh, like, pressure in my head. It was like a stress headache. I go to UCLA, this is in 2000, 2001, I don't think I had insurance yet, mm. uh, medical insurance meaning for the group, that's when you're an entrepreneur. I went to, I went to <laughs> well, that was a long time ago, I went to UCLA, it ch they charged me $3,000 for an wow. MRI and for oh. um, all that mm. stuff. Guess what happened? When the project finished, the headache went away. Ah. It was too much information yeah. to have in your head. Yep, right. So prevent well, paying $3,000. I think also you can never be sure of what are the, what's the skill set of everyone who's working on the project. So different people have different skill sets, you know, whether it's the marketing team or, you know, someone on, on the business side, someone on who's just purely on the creative concepting mm -hmm. side. Everyone might start calling something different, I you think know, by really a different point. name. Everybody comes from a different background. Not understand worked, what you're talking yeah. about. And it becomes intimidating, like, oh, we don't want to talk to them because how do we even begin to right. make a dialogue? Or why are you calling it that? Right. Like, we need to call, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It makes it more yeah. neutral. I think that's a really good point. So. Actually, that, that's an excellent point, the different people that are going to be touching the, pro the project. Um, so, Victoria, as, as Ari's doing that, um, I'm going to introduce, uh, we'll, we'll review the, it's like a cooking show. Ari's going to be cooking that right now, and I'm going <laughs> to review something that's on my screen that's really important. So, first of all, just acknowledge, and, and talking about Zen Buddhism, uh, one of the people that really was influential, he was a guest on the show, uh, Tony Wong. Uh, and he's, we're trying to book him Before again, that. he's fairly busy. Uh, but he, he trained uh, the group, he trained my company and myself in Agile um, uh, several years ago, like three years ago now, um, or four years ago now. And it, it's funny because today, as, uh, as we continue to grow and as we continue to do more and more diverse projects, it all sinks in, and now I understand it. Like, you know when you learn something and you kind of know it, but when you start practicing, it becomes yeah. who you are. It's like Karate yeah, Kid. It's like yeah. Karate Kid. Like, like right. Wax, wax right. on, right. wax off. And that's what I mean, doing it, even though you don't understand why. Right. Because what we do is that we're smarter than, 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 nah, you know what, I don't need to do that. I do yeah. this, I, wait, wait, I do this all the time. Fuck, I can keep this on my head, I'm, yep. I'm a badass. It's like practicing the notes on a piano and then playing a concerto. You know, it's the difference between that, when you really let go and the emotion of the moment Brilliant. is taking you. Yeah. Brilliant. When you know that you don't even have to think about it right. and you just do it and You're it flows. You're in the zone. You're in the zone. Love it. And, and as designers, we like to be in the zone when we design. How about being in the zone when we do project management and when we do architecture? Wow. 
Isn't that That's awesome? an idea. That's the promise that we're making you here <laughs> to keep you in the zone. Uh. So let me show you this and explain it to you. Everything that, that I learned in terms of the project management system or in terms of agile and execution and what we're about to do breaks down to this one, two, three triangle. The first one is really setting the goal. Uh, what is the goal of a meeting or what is the goal of the site? And really working towards the goal versus working towards like a list of things, right? That, that, that goal or that objective sometimes has nothing to do with the second part, number two, which is really an outline of the plan. Like what are all the different tasks that we're going to do in order to execute you know, this particular, let's say, website, which is what we're doing. And then number three is the check-in, the frequency of how many times you check in to the progress and how many times you see where we are. So what I want to introduce to this, to this project as we're beginning to uh, wrap up this phase is this idea that we're setting up a goal, we're setting up a plan of the things that we're going to do, and we're doing it together. And we have the client on set who happens to also be our producer. So we're going to talk a little bit about the goal first and just for that, and then we come back to me on the camera, uh, since we have to work on the, we brought these big, big ass stickies that we're going to put up here on the wall uh, to use them. You can do it in any way you can. Um, I'm, I have a picture here of how we do it and how I, we, I learned. It's, it's to make it physical. So what you're seeing on, on your screen is actually a board for a project in our office. And it's a little bit crooked there, but you can see at the top that there is a, a, a particular goal. This happened to be for just one week of work that we were doing where we needed to deliver a large number of assets and we needed to break it down. On the right of that, on your left on the screen, we had what, what, what did it mean to be done? You know, uh, uh, and here it says enough photo, Photoshop files to create all the major page, pages and uh, to show the functionality. That's what we needed mm -hmm. to get the developers started. Then you have the team below it and what the responsibilities. Something that's missing there is that I actually had the team sign a commitment to mm. this plan for that week. And it's symbolic. But the team goes up and signs it, and you're like, suddenly, you know, it's a bigger commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the middle is the site map for this particular site. Here's uh, in, the, in the middle there of that, there is a, there's a conceptual architecture framework for the product. This is a startup, and it's a product that we're developing. I left it blurry on purpose a little bit. I think it's important to say, like, these are on big boards, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is, if I zoom out, there's a board next to it. I wish I would have done a bigger picture of it. I saw this for the first time at an ad agency at Ogilvy uh, in 2003 mm. or four. I was visiting Ogilvy, and they had these big foam core blackboards all around the offices with all the creative. Mm. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. It's a way that if you don't have uh, pin boards in your office you know, to pin it, you can just go buy a, a, a foam core. They're like, I think they're like 80 No, right. they're like $35 each, right. uh, and you pin it all $35 for a board? It's 8 by 4 feet. Wow. It's like, oh, they last for a while. They last for a long time. You know what? I might be overpricing it. It might be I like think 12. we can find something more. So, as the producer. Uh, okay, no. <laughs> you, you, I like that. Budget. You want to negotiate <laughs> and negotiate money. the budget. Yeah, so true. let's bring the site map back up, Ari, and begin making. I'm going to get up in a second. Absolutely. I've got it pretty much with the pages that we have from that episode, from mm. the screenshot. Look at that. Awesome. So that, that's just, and this is small since we're doing it here. Let's talk, so we have the home, we have search. Let, let's leave it actually full screen so I can, I can read it a little bit here. Uh, we have the home, we have search, which we're going to have to modify and put probably a little bit up. Make the pasteboard a little bigger, actually, so that we can begin extending that as we go. The yeah, assessment uh, process, which we're going to have to develop out. Uh, then we have the shows, community, and contact. And designers, again, he's doing it in Illustrator. You can do this in OmniGraffle. You can do this in Balsamic. You can do it in a lot of different tools. It, do, use what you're comfortable with. Uh, don't necessarily, uh, there we go. Nice. Uh, so we got assessment, we got shows, we got community and contact. The shows is going to be the part that we're going to probably work out the most. This is the, the, the online TV version of the sitemap, so you can read it. All right, so, so that's what we have now. What I want to do today is to flesh out everything else that we can potentially have on the site as it relates to the workbook. So let's just get started. We're at the 19 minute mark. I'm going to bring up my workbook here in a second. Anything else, Ari, about the sitemaps or the... Uh... The project boards. I mean, actually, something that, that I always like to mention is that sometimes I see a tendency for people to have these digital documents like PDFs with different slides and they're reluctant to print them for whatever reason because they feel like they have it there. But just the... Just taking like that multi-page document, printing it out, and having it all on a board is just so much easier, at least for visual people, to like see the entirety of it mm -hmm. at once, you know, without like one page, another page. Oh, let's go back three pages because I forgot. You know, like just having everything there is super useful. I, I have a hard time. I have a really hard time with documents and with like density. Right. Uh, 
ADD is is uh, is a you got to break thing. it apart. I have to break it up into yeah. little chunks, and then I have to really be able to see it all at one time. Ad agencies, I think, uh, do this really well with their comps. You watch a movie. Hey, we're making a movie. It's like making a movie. Exactly. You watch Story Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. They storyboard it. They put it out. You go to yeah, Pixar. Right. You watch Pixar. They have every single freaking yep. board of the and, frame. Right. To be honest, in that situation, they actually have very different versions of the storyboards depending on who needs to look at it. They may have one that's just literally yeah. a color script that's just tiny little thumbnails that's for the lighters that they know what the emotional beats are. They may have something that's really, really dense that's just for gags, like the same way that you guys are doing it here. It's like you're presenting data in the correct method for the correct people. For the correct people. Context is extremely important, 100% right. We had, a, we had a question already from, uh, I think, Adondos. Um, at this early stage, he's wondering, is there any SEO consideration for a site map? Th that's a really great question, Adanda. Yes, the answer is yes. So my philosophy from an SEO standpoint is that you know relevance and content really ultimately make SEO there's the technical aspects of that, best practices and how metadata is handled and how mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're structuring your code in order for it to work. That's one part, and that's the left brain part. The right brain part is, in my experience, um, and I'll just talk about the experience for the group site in general, is that we have, I think, a five page rank, which is actually pretty high. Right. Um, and part of that, um, again, we're an agency when you Google. My goal was, I want someone to, go this is two years ago or a year and a half, uh, marketing associate that came from an SEO firm that I hired, Wes, shout out to Wes, he's working at a social media agency now here in LA. Um, I told him our goal is to be uh, in the f top five mm -hmm. when you Google digital agency. Uh, every single agent, and actually, let me see if I can. This is the true test. Uh, this is the true test. It's a live test. Uh, live you really want to do this live? Let's cut, yeah, to, let's cut okay. the Jose's. Oh, actually, let's no, 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 I'm sorry. It's digital agency, not not, not the group. Digital <laughs> the, I hope the group that's, comes that's up. A, that one, I hope that <laughs> one. Yeah, wow, well, that came up. So digital yeah. agency, ah, you know what? Holy schmoly. But hold on, no, 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 that's bias because Google knows that I'm logged into my account oh, and it knows that that's important. It's just trying to make so you So you have to open an incognito window real quick mm -hmm. here. Um, the group, uh, incognito. Uh, digital agency is what I'm looking for. Digital agency. I'll Google it. Yeah. So Blitz, Racer, Fish, in the group. Like there you go. Look at that. So that's great. That and that's not even Digital Agency LA or no, Digital no. Agency. That, digital that's Agency. Just straight up. Period. I am wow. below my parent. I came from Racer Fish and I'm mm -hmm. right below it. That's so great. how did we do that, uh, Adando? Uh, and how does that considered? It was not considered in the site map of the site. The site basically has basic stuff about the company. It was. It's, it's the content creation that we do. Right. Mm -hmm. The show is huge, but we 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 put out content, out content, out content. And Flickr, in uh, in a in a YouTube, on the blog, on a separate blog. So so Google seeing you know groupthink.net mm -hmm. pointing to the group or having so much right. content. It's really building a, an ecosystem that really uh, does so a great a, it, job. It's a constant yeah. upkeep. Um, it's not just a one-off. It's not an ongoing point. basis, and exactly. that's usually planning that has to happen during this phase, though. Mm -hmm. Content planning is something that gets missed. So that that's that. That's I hope a really that good point. I mean, the way you actually the way you write your content has a lot to do with how you rank. Having digital agency in our name and having mm -hmm. digital agency in all the tags. Right. And I, I, I hope we're digital agency tagging our YouTube clips. I'm not sure if we are or not. Um, we uh, might not be. We, we might, might not be. be actually. But but it still it still works. Mm -hmm. The clips are really. Shows you the value of a good copywriter. Mm -hmm. There also. you go. Let, cop, I don't want to go into copywriter uh, mode talk, but it is critical. Writing is something that is missed. Uh, there's a great uh, post by uh, Karen McGrain, who, by the way, is speaking also at the How Digital Conference in San Francisco. And if you go to This Week in Web Design, uh, there's a little ad for it. I'm going to be speaking there about the transition from print to web. It's in November. Uh, it's going to be an awesome conference. So I'm adding that plug. But Karen wrote a post. If you look for Karen McGrain, K A R E N McGrain, uh, McCrane, however that's spelled, she did a really great post on content. That people do buckets, architects do buckets of content. Here's where things are going to go, etc. But there is no copywriter or any definition of the content early on enough to really know exactly how content is going to fit mm -hmm. into your yeah. framework, which is a mistake. Um, all right, and, and and it makes a big difference in the design if you're doing a large site. Finding people that know how to write for the web, I've also found a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Finding people who know how to write for the web is a yeah. huge one. So that's so, a great question. That's yeah, that a great question. Great. Thank you, uh, 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 Adando, and thank you for watching the show. Really appreciate it. Um, so let's let's get started with this. I'm going to talk about the bin. Let's go back, uh, Ari, to uh, to the uh, to where we are with the architecture. I'm going to see how how um, I want to show a picture. Uh, let me see if I can find this. I have it open of the process that we're about to do uh, from a project. Um, and my computer just uh, 
turned off there for a second. But while we're doing that, Ari, um, what has been your experience in, in uh, planning? And you've done this before. You've done this style of planning. Right. What I mean, has I been think, your experience? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really, uh, you move really quickly, which I think is good. You get everything done in a day, basically. Yeah. You have the whole team there. You get consensus. Um, I think it's great because you outline everything at the beginning. So you kind of like have, even if it changes down the road, um, you kind of like have a, a very good sense at the beginning of what the project is going to entail. And because of, because of the fact that you're outlining these features or, or these, uh, these things that you want to accomplish, you can prioritize them, which I think is key. So something I've seen that's great that we do with clients is, you know, obviously you're not going to tell them that you're not going to give them everything they want, but you want them to kind of help you prioritize. So if the, something needs to fall off, they're very clear that what's on top of the list is probably going to make it and what's at the very bottom might or might not make it. You know? Or might go in on a rolling or basis. Or might go in in another phase another of the project. Another phase of the project, exactly. yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I want to. Sh I'm going to show this a, a little bit here. I'm going to show you guys the folder I have for this week in web design. Can you restart IVGA really quick? Uh, I think when your computer no went down, we we lost yeah, it. Yeah, I, I made a mistake of shutting my screen. I thought I was going to uh, go off there, but um, the introduction I was going to do when I shut it as as the now I'm connected again. Let's see if it comes up. Oh, there you go. It's up. So Thank so you. I have execution, inception, and launch as three folders. Uh, and then I have project management as a separate folder. The reason why I did that versus all the discrete phases that go into the project is because there are too many and I get a little bit confused. So what I'm showing you is what I am doing now, today, uh, in order to simplify projects for myself and for my teams. Um, so when we go to inception, which is the phase that we're in now, um, you're going to have all the things that we're doing during this beginning phase, you know, like the product development workshops, which we did earlier in the pre previous shows, uh, the creative brief, you know, which is here's how it's going to look, the architecture or strategy brief, here's the approach we're going to take. We sometimes do uh, stylescapes and mm -hmm. like design explorations, and we take this to the client at the end of discovery as this is what we're going to build. And also part of that is the statement of work and what are all the things that we agreed during this phase right here. So the, the reason why uh, that's important uh, is for this reason, what Ari said. Here's this picture. This is us planning at one of the development teams at their office uh, with a development partner uh, and a client. Um, the, uh, the, uh, let me remove the faces there for a second. Uh, what we're about to do today, which was we put the site map and the, the, what we were, it's not the site map, it's, it's, it is based on the site map. Here's everything we're going to do for the site. And then here are all of the... It's uh, all the discrete tasks. The discrete tasks yes. that are going to occur in order to create that, that get created in that one day. So the project manager basically can create the project roadmap in one day with the entire team there. The mm -hmm. most important part is prioritizing with the client. Mm -hmm. And we used uh, something that, uh, that uh, our development partner, there's several ways to prioritize, but we used something that our development partner uh, introduced us to. And, and, and it's a simple... It's a simple uh, uh, way of prioritizing, and I'm actually going to probably getting up might be a good thing. I don't know. Must have uh, is could have, uh, should have, and won't have. And the acronym uh, ends up um, spelling Moscow. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put as many features, and I have the one, two, three there, which if you love Keynote, you can see that it's because I have bullets and you can go here and you can, oh, look at that. The bullets even have the numeration system that I'm talking about, which is uh, sub subs, which are right here in Roman numerals. All right, but uh, remove the bullets. So there, there's what we're going to put on each of these features. And we're at the 28 minute mark. Uh, so does that make sense? So this is must have, the, the site must have that, could have. And again, should have, I think, uh, it, should go, it goes above, is that right? That mm -hmm. spells Moscow. And then won't have. So we also use one, two, three. We've used, there's, there's a different ways of prioritizing, but this is what we're going to use today. So M, S, C, or W. Um, all right. So it's usually done on the table, but because of the camera setup, we're going to have to do this uh, here on the whiteboard. What okay. I want to do, and I'm the only one who can get up, I want your help, Ari, in uh, putting the, uh, on these yellow cards, putting the, actually, let's use the red cards because they're more bright. Uh, you, 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 both of you helping me in putting um, the top level of the architecture on there, mm -hmm. um, what the sites are, and I want with Ryan to brainstorm additional ones. And I'm going to do the same. The, the reason why, and I have, we've done it again, uh, we've done the same process uh, with um, 
the client where we took the site map and we put it on stickies, big mm -hmm. stickies on the wall, and we mm -hmm. had them review it and prioritize it. And the, the, the reason the names of the architecture, yeah, it's not a lot. Do I need to do it Planning basics. Okay. Oh. Um, the reason for that is primarily because. Uh, um, Ryan, is it okay if I erase the agenda? Go for it. Okay. Yeah, it's we just there we for have it in our heads. We have it written down. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because the client, you know, in a big meeting, reviewing a site map and making changes to a live site map is really difficult. The reason why I'm having Ari do them is so that we have them on the table also, and I can basically replicate mm -hmm. what's on the table up here in really big stickies. Again, have fun. This is this should be a messy process. It's not the the biggest secret I learned about being a web designer is that. The best way to plan and to do these things is actually OG, old school style. Mm -hmm. Simply with well, tools. messy at the top of the project as opposed to once you're about to launch. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah. Let's be clear there. I don't think anybody does it that way. Nice. But you know, I think that was a really big point last week when you're just doing all that stuff on the whiteboard and people were like, "Wow, that was really fast." It wasn't just fast. It was also like because it was so temporary, you're free to just blow stuff out. Like mm -hmm. we'd say something in two minutes later, like, you know what, that was totally wrong. Let's throw that away and let's go back. When there's a certain amount of permanence when you're typing something in and it's right there. Like here, it feels like if something's bad, we can rip it up and throw it on the ground. I'll, I'll, I'll show this again, and I'm going to give credit again to Tony Wong, Beautiful. who trained us. Ouch. This is an art bin. I, the last time I had one of these was 15 years ago when I was at Art Center. Mm -hmm. You can buy them at your local art store for... 30, 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, some come with stuff. So what it has in it, it has pens, of course, a lot of Sharpies of different Ooh. colors. Uh, let me put oh. it over this way. Uh, uh, whiteboard, uh, dry erase, highlighters, a lot of index cards, tape, uh, pencils, uh, basically everything you need in order to do this process. And we bring this in with a client and we spend a day, a whole day, working on it together. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, what you said is actually probably one of the most important things. Both of you said something, two things. One, it's messy now versus messy later. You're doing it with the client and you can quickly erase. And you, yep. you know what, what we did at the meeting that I was telling you is, oh, you know, we need to change this yep. over here and we're gonna rename this. Let's put up another, right? A, the client sees that you they're being part them. of the process and that right. we're doing what they're saying, right. and we're doing it together. It goes back to that handshake idea. Like, yes. this is still part of the handshake. Yes. You're still involved. Yes. The problem, the biggest problem with web design is communication and not doing it with all the disciplines represented. In, in the example that I was showing you on the whiteboard, the development team is in the room. Today, we're doing it without the development team. We were planning on doing this with a developer in the room. So let's do it without that, and we can uh, chime in in terms of features and functionality. Uh, the episode, we're going to do an episode where we're going to review the same thing that we're doing here today with a developer. So, uh, Ari, you have uh, assessment, the shows. Assessment shows, community, and contact. Spell that out for me. Assessment oh, is a... Ass. Assessment. <laughs> uh, I left it a little bit short there. Shows. Uh, let me grab a... a whoa, 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 whoa. That's not good. That's not good. When we're doing that, we try not to have your laptop there. Oh, here. Oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> That's the first for the show. Whoa, it restarted. That's perfect. Wow. All right, so let's keep on going. The show must go on, as they say in Hollywood. Um, so shows is the next one. The next one is shows. Then we have... Ah, uh, that marker's not working. There you go. Thank you very much. Keep it moving. I'll take care of it. We keep it moving. That's what we do here. Live, Live on TV. air. The first time... Shows, what's the next one? Community. Community. And then contact is the last one. Thank you, Ryan. No worries. And then contact. Yep. Okay, we know that there's more stuff than this, so we, 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 so let's do this. Let's flesh out a little bit and let's rehash and talk about what we had before. Um, so the reason why we had um, assessment was because we wanted to do the flow of people figuring out what their, you know, what their job, what, what, what is, what, type what the type of programming gonna, is that yeah, they want. Exactly. Right. So what, we don't have anything under the flow right now, right? Nope. So let's talk up. So you mean what type of programming they would want as a part of this show? Yeah, or? it's kind of like a personality or a behavioral assessment. Okay. It's a, you know, hey, are you interested in this or are you interested in that? Um, and um, thank you. What oh. do you want to see, what do you want to on, see on this yeah. weekend? And I'll network. spit out. Okay. It's kind of like an advanced search. Okay. Like I'm used to this, I'm used to that. You right, know. so you could Google stuff even mm -hmm. inside of the, or search, sorry, inside yeah. of the. Site itself. It's, All just, it, it's like Pandora, right? It's like, like Pandora. Uh -huh. You pick certain things, or it kind of uh, like. And it generates you your own channel, kind of a thing. Correct. Right. Yeah. So oh, very your own cool. Ah. Very so cool. So basically, the first thing that that's going to have 
um, as a step, it's going to be the the. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. It's awesome. Um, the, um, uh, the the landing page for mm -hmm. the assessment, right? And we might be br coming from other. We might be. I'm, I'm going to write this way, like kind of like how Vanna White can show the. There we go. We're going to have people coming in from Google. We're going to have people coming in from our blog. We're going to have people coming in from Twitter. Um, we're going to have people coming in from uh, Facebook. Um, so talking about SEO and talking about that. So you know what we're missing here? We're missing the, 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 uh, the show should have, I'm sorry, the network, Ryan, should have a blog. Like an yes. ongoing kind of the network. It would be great to have a blog that that addresses the entire network at a top level. Yeah, at a and top then level. each show individually, it would be great to have it housed within the site. We talked about that a lot. So you know, in contact, it's just not that important. I'm gonna keep it off. The, that. Well, you know, you can put it right next to the homepage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna keep it up here, and this is what I like about doing this exercise on a whiteboard that you can actually have multiple things. So the, the blog is, is that similar to the community, Ryan, or is that a little different? Um, I think the blog is a, a, not necessarily a community. It's more of like a top level. It's topic based. We're going to be able to, to push people back and forth between different shows. Like, hey, we normally have Ian Rogers on This Week in Music, but for some reason this week he's going to be on This Week in Web Design to talk some issues about integrating music apps into your site, oh, something like that. Cool. Cool. So be able to point people I back like and that. forth. So it technically is kind of community, but it's more of like an identity builder, more of like the it's an announcement channel. You know what it is? You know what a really good example is? If you watch Adult Swim, if you've ever seen that. I love Adult We've Swim. We've talked about this before, that they had the simplest branding of white text on black, and immediately after six months of it, you had a voice, you had a branding, and it was just white text on black. It, but between it, the writing and the look of it, so the blog essentially would be that for me, where it's like, this is the voice of the entire network, which right now we don't have. We have you the closest what? thing that is Jason right now. I, 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 love, I love that idea of, and Jason's going towards that with you know, launch and with a lot of what's Correct. happening. I love that idea of the network having that just blunt, simple kind of like, look, here's a fact, and just have a fact. Yep. Fact, by the year 2019, 40% of the U.S. workforce will be independent. Mm -hmm. Bam! Totally. That came out of the labor issue and in 2000 and, uh, 2010. And this is Jason, who is the chief CEO. officer He's CEO. here, right? Yeah. Um, He's our client. He has a fantastic Twitter. Yes. I started following his Twitter after I got, had the opportunity to meet him last time. And yeah. you're absolutely right. He has a great voice. I would, lo I would love to be able to have that for the, for the entire network. Because we've yeah. talked here internally, and it's, it's honestly, it's really become adopted after having done it on the show a couple times and Jason hearing it. Those two things of the entire network is basically entrepreneurial plus X, and we're here to inspire, educate, and entertain. Yes, We've been saying yeah. that ad nauseum internally. Now, with a blog, we'd be able to, like, whoever is writing for that blog has both of those statements taped to their computer, and every time they write it, they're reaffirming that with every single entry. Yeah, because he has a real passion for entrepreneurship and creating that voice. Mm -hmm. What is he on Twitter? What's his name He's on just at Jason. at Jason. At Jason. Yeah, he got a good one there. He nailed it. How I want to get at Jose. One? What can I do for, for Twitter? <laughs> got to find that guy. I'm That's screwed. Cool. So, so it's inspire, so educate, in, inspire, educate, and entertain. Correct. In that order. Uh, inspire... I love that so much. Inspire, educate, and entertain. I E E, institute, inspire. <laughs> you know what would be funny? We can make up uh, like a, uh, an institute, yep. like the I E Institute for Entrepreneurship, and do a whole campaign around that, and exactly. develop the voice around this concept of, uh, of uh, well, basically, uh, as the movement to kind of empower mm -hmm. people who want to do their thing. You know? Can I have you uh, restart your machine again? I think uh, yeah, gonna, done. No, I haven't restarted uh, uh, IBJ. Okay. There it is. IBGA is now. Should back? All right. So, Ari, right, let's continue. This yep. is great. This is a great conversation about the blog and the voice. Something that we were missing. I'm going to spell community in here. What what features do we want um, to have uh, here on community, Ryan? Like more discrete features. And again, um, tr traditionally we would be doing this on cards together on the table and yeah. kind of being able to do it really quick. Uh, right now, we're just going to slap it up here. It's the same thing. And we actually in the in the chat we've been talking about this. Um, uh, being able to surface heroes within the community, people that okay. you can then follow. Can, so can that you they guys can help me with this? Like right here, all the stuff that we're gonna wrap, 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 uh, uh, wrap you know, out. We're gonna write it again. The the, the process involves the entire team, and at the same time, Ari, okay. you can be making it live. I'm doing it. All right. So so heroes. What else? Do you want me to write heroes? Yeah, we're right? gonna write together. Team effort. What else, Ryan? Um, so, forums. Forums for me is the biggest thing for community that so we're lacking. Forums. forums. And we forums. Want heroes. Um, I think within that kind of like hero concept is um, user stories. 
So I maybe it's that. not necessarily the one expert, but a user story. Like, um, we just got an incredibly great executive producer, Cheryl, who has a story that shockingly matches up almost exactly to one of the user profiles we created. Mind blowing. It's mind, mind blowing. blowing. Let's actually bring that up because I want people. What, what episode did we do? What episode did we do the uh, the uh, what episode did we do the the profiles? Um, I can pull it up on YouTube. It was three or four ago. It was three or four ago. But I want to show like this process working in real life. I mean, this is pretty. Yeah. So user stories, forums is super important. And forums is actually you know as as right a, the top. as the client. One more high level thing, and I believe Adonis even brought this up. Um, I don't know if it necessarily goes to its own page, but something as a reminder is um, dealing with our, our sponsors, especially our top level kind of mm -hmm. the high level sponsors that yeah, are doing you know, either network or so I don't know where they get sponsorship. Well, yeah, I don't know if we necessarily have a page, but as a client, uh, that, as we were doing all this, I would want to say like I don't know if there's a panel that goes up or that's part of there's just two, a there's two, there, there's two things. So what I do is that I put the uh, and, and, and I'm trying to answer that question and, and interrupt me if you need to, Ryan. Oh no. So here's home, right? Mm -hmm. Zero point zero, and I'm not going to give numbers to these yet. If I do, I'm going to give them on the whiteboard so that if we change them around. Right. Um, so, so contact and sponsors. Sponsors, th I think this needs to be primarily people coming in in the kit, like finding out about what we're offering, our right. audience, just the stuff that's going to try to invite them. What we're trying to figure out is how do we integrate them? That to me, that's that. That's what I want more because all of our competitors that we look at, that's one thing they have done is that they just have a sponsor page and they just throw that sponsor on there, and no one other than the sponsor, when the first week that they do it, ever goes to that page. There's like, oh, I got what I paid for. It's there. It's been checked off. It needs to be integrated. So I don't know as a client when I would call it that. partner, part, part, partner, a partner voice. Yeah. Here, here's the bottom line: the best partners are going to be the ones that uh, that are even themselves. Very, uh, currently, let's say we're web designers, we're consultants. We need to be protected from you know uh, anything. A site that we built and that we develop might go down, and uh, the client doesn't have you know the uh, the uh, uh, or, or the, the developer doesn't have insurance, and you're you're small and you're trying to do you know uh, um, you're trying to do a great job. So Hiscox Insurance is actually a very good partner. Excellent, absolutely. So as a topic. It's really the partner voice and the topics that we're talking about. American Express does a great job with with uh, with uh, Open their forum. Yes. So how do we get the partner voice? Well, to I, I think I think one of the biggest places I want that integrated is within the the community where it, it's yeah. organic and it's not forced. And to be honest, that's where in both heroes and user stories. Um, and Jose just now, or uh, Ari just now, gave us a great user story and for his involvement with, with um, Hiscox. If we could actually surface that within the site and not just be within one self-contained show, mm. whether it's just pulling out the clip or it's writing a blog post or having Ari as a hero have his own page with his own blog that people can go to, that he can call that clip out. Um, but I agree with you, like integrating it versus just spamming it up at the top of the, the page. Exactly, it has to be genu authentic, and that was actually one of the uh, brand attributes, authentic interaction. So on my screen, I have I have uh, uh, Cheryl Anderson, and uh, from uh, Riverside, uh, she has a computer science, a computer info systems degree, mm -hmm. and she's working in starting her own freelance practice, and she's self-taught. So something that I did for her last week is I put, uh, a, she, I read her profile. I said she's going through exactly what I went through, uh, uh, you know, nine years ago. I uploaded the, the the original 2005, not nine years ago, but it was a midpoint business plan, uh, and also the template for business planning and PowerPoint that, yeah. into the executive producer folder. She she's getting me to help her and guide her through starting her practice at a personal level because she's an executive producer. That's an integrated plug. That wasn't a plug. That's mm -hmm. like that's really what we're doing. Exactly. I'm helping her get her business started. All right. So partner voice. That's awesome. So for shows, and we're ending up doing less and more than um, let let's let's do more stuff. Let's put more stuff in here. Mm -hmm. um, meaning like let, let's try to uh, flush this out even a little further. Um, so for the assessment, there's a landing, but there's a different steps. So what I would do, uh, so it's going to be a wizard, and it's going to be steps one through, you know, uh, let's do each. Let's do three steps to keep it simple, uh, because it's first the taking uh, what the assessment is, what it is. Uh, do you want all three of these on the same no, card? No, three cards. Or three cards. cards. So okay. what what the assessment is, then um, the assessment itself, and then uh, and imagine this is going to be a, you know a set of questions of quick questions. It might be actually very visual. Um, and then the last one is results. 
which gives you all the shows that you should be watching. Show shows, heroes, potentially threads. Ah, what I would like to yes. be able to do is be able to build a profile page that says, here's the shows, here's some heroes that you should actually follow. Here are some threads we pre-subscribed to you within the forums that you can then say, oh, you know what, Ari is talking in here, and uh, Adanos mentioned something awesome, and we think that you would already enjoy this content. And okay. we're going to continue monitoring in the background, yes. but we think these are the three places you should go. Yes, but I'm sorry. Go I'm, ahead. I'm the queen of dumb questions. No, but no. no. So, you're saying when somebody Googles, Twitters, whatever, and then comes to us, we are making an assessment of what is their interest, right? In yeah, I'm going to explain it to you very quickly. So when uh, a few years ago, about three years ago, I was developing content, uh, educational content for creative people on business. And one of the things that I did in management training, and I'll do a plug for the training, I, I went to MAP. Uh, I've done a lot of different training things. This one was one that was interesting that I sent all, all, my entire executive team at that time. Uh, I sent to the to the training um, and uh, map management action planning. I think um, it, 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 they during that gave every single individual who attended before they attended something called a disc assessment. And it's kind of you, you've taken Myers Briggs, right? You know, personality assessment. I haven't. You have not. I like wow. my personality. No, no, no. It, 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 look, in, in what, what it is, you know how we talk about web design, you have the business yeah. interest. I've the, heard of it. The creative yeah. interest. Yep. You have all these diff four personality or four yes. types of functions on our project. Uh -huh. uh, marketing, business, creative, and technical. Those are going to be the people you're going to have on a web project, right? Gotcha. Am I missing yes. anybody? I don't think so. Marketing. Technology, technology creative. Creative. The, you know, and business. The one thing I'm okay. missing that overarchs all of them is user experience people. And yeah. user experience people are a bridge between creative technology and business. Yeah. And if you're a good user experience person, you're in such high demand, it's like doing this for people, it's in huge demand. You know, this, this is the gold right here. The yep. person who can think about all these things and get the technical people on the same page, get the business people on the same page, extract their, their, their needs out of the business people like we're doing right here. Right. Um, it's really super critical. All right, so the assessment, back the assessment, to this, yeah. I went off onto left field, is, <laughs> is a disc-like assessment of whether you're technically oriented, business oriented, marketing oriented, or creatively oriented. I see. So what's your purpose in coming to the site? Right. So okay. are, are you, what, what, and people are asking this question. I get this question all the time. Should I do, a, should I be a development developer? Should I be a designer? Yeah. I don't know. I get asked that all the time. Too. What do you like? What do you, you know, love? Yeah, exactly. Come to group school and we can talk about it. <laughs> but the assessment really is that. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I've given this assessment to 300, 400 people at a time. Not one person got up and said, this is not me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Every single. Oh, I, I want to take your assessment. I'll, I'll give it okay, to you. Okay, but going back to the cards, though, ah. to keep in the focus, because I know we don't have yeah, much time thank left. You, the, producer. the three card keeping us on track. The three cards are: um, what is my interest? I got the end one, which is the results. results. So let's, put that, let's start so with the results. So what's the midway? What was the so midway it's really, topic? It's, it's, that the you the were topic to? is really the. Uh, it, it's kind of like uh, it's a bunch what? of questions. So it's questions. Questions. Yeah. Okay, so it's those questions that are the actual body of the assessment. Correct. Yes. That that what is the? How are we synthesizing the data? You're giving Correct. us. Yeah. The so information. What, what Ryan just said was really good because it was actually the results. It was the results of uh, of it are going to include heroes, and this is something that you can do. That you can do. This is like, what do you want to do? I love that question. Yeah. And by the way, schools do this a lot. It'd be great to have a pre-populated profile, essentially. Like, through this, ah, I love to be able to say, hey, Are instead you of you having this? to go through the profile, you already just did it. Not only was it a tool for us to be able to say, these are things we think you'd like to watch, but so you let's built add the profile that one. already. We have so basically like automatic ones. That it, let's call it, what do we want to call it? Um, and I'm having some challenges with my tape. <laughs> Crowntuner uh, had a good question for you, Jose. What's the um, question? He was wondering if you're going to give that same assessment at group school, the one you just I am. About. The first thing we're going to do on the first day is we're going to spend you know, 30 minutes of our first day together doing the assessment. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love doing it for myself. I'll take it again. It's, is this it Myers-Briggs or this no, is it's based on disc. disc. Okay. It's, it's based on disc. Um, and disc is really, really good. I it's not like it. a Scientology thing. Yeah, you were gonna actually. <laughs> we're Sterling gonna. Sterling Corporation. I, you know, I'll say this. We all took that. I'm not a Scientologist, and it that has the reputation. Yeah. But I really like their systems. I all have right. no problem That's with Scientology at all. <laughs> um, questions, results. No, you know, it's all. It is what it is. I, but it is a similar test. I mean, it's it's a maybe not a similar test, but it's a test. It's an assessment of 
What are your interests? Yeah, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 it, and it, that, it uses that, like... You, I, I haven't taken Myers-Briggs, but I have taken the Scientology test. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> awesome. When I, like I was it. 18. How, what, right. Well, let's not talk about the results. Can you give me one I don't more? remember. <laughs> let's talk about pre-populated. Uh, Ryan yeah. talked about having the... One more. Call, call it... Okay. Uh, Call it precognition. I don't know. It basically has Wait, the Wait, precognition. Precogn this is a part of the assessment? Yeah, this is actually, uh, I'm going to move this down. In addition to, to uh, so this is going to be, the what is going to be take the test. And this is something that I also learned during the process. Oops, I dropped it. But ideas that, you know, you want to put, it, just put it on the floor. It's okay. During the whole. <laughs> the water, the paper. The, you know what? <laughs> that water was planned, guys. Just yeah, so that know. was planned. That, that was happened. just to show you that how you have to move CG. fast. That was actually CG. Yeah, exactly. Keep on moving. So let's, let's do that one. Let's. Uh, okay, so this one is? I call it Profile 1, Profile 2, Profile 3, Profile 4, and we'll do four cards. And what it will be, it will be our profiles. Yep. And it will be pre-populated, you know, like, are you interested oh. in? It, be, it has it, a picture, it has everything. It'll be, yeah, it, we're talking about the results, right? right. No, at we're the talking beginning. About with you can either assessment. take the quiz, because you don't know, right. or you can say, look, I'm a designer, I'm looking right. for this. Bam, and it has a picture. And we already have it ready for you to go. go. And then we give you all the content related to I that. I love that. Oh, or, or I'm a startup. So there's an entryway, so that if you are decided, there's a path for you as well. Yeah, the sharper the sharper your wedge, or the more defined that we do this. You know, marketing people do this all the time: audience segmentation, landing pages for different profiles. We're doing exactly the same right. thing in the development. Because some people know what they want, also. Yeah, it's, this is for them. This right here is for them. So, you know, that's why having these be stickies is so much better. Do you want me to cut some tape for you? I might need that. Yeah, because I'm having <laughs> a hard time here. Uh, talking and yeah. chewing on tape. It's disgusting. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of... Actually, I was going to yeah. say, ever since you did the Moscow assessment thing in this here, too, it's just like one giant online dating profile. <laughs> we you want to hear we, something? Must we have, joked should about have, have, no, have, have video. Find a husband. Well, go ahead. Right? We've joked about that multiple times, that, that the process we'd like to take you through is essentially like your dating profile for this weekend. Wow. That we'd like to steer you away from the stuff that you for like. That's how you trust weekend. us more. Okay. You we have, we're gonna this weekend. We oh, have yeah. so much content. <laughs> it changes yeah, I'm having a weekend. seriously hard time with that. I'm gonna switch. Okay, yeah. But really, but really, we wait. Need I need to. Okay. So, yeah. Wipe so profile it. two here. I'm okay. gonna switch to manual. Um, profile have three. A, have you got a so, so 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 it's actually four profiles. So I'm gonna move this around. Has he got his scissors in his art thing? You know, here let's 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 even make it a little bit easier. Four profiles. Here we go. That's enough uh, right now. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, oh, uh, excellent. Thank you. Some gaffer's tape, so it can be like a show. <laughs> um, so right Suddenly here. Suddenly he's a grip. Here, here's what we're gonna do. So four profiles. Those are for the people who know, and then uh, questions and actual assessments. So this is really, the, the, in, it's really don't know, don't know. That's kind of like what happens here. If you don't know, right here. So that's the assessment, and we're spending the whole show on that. But you know what? This this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Like Linda Weinman, Linda.com should have this. There's yeah. so much content. There's too much content. There's too much content. What content's yeah. important? Well, it was getting back to what we were saying. Like, kind of like the purpose of a dating site is just to filter the people we know you 100% don't want to be associated with. We will push that away for you, and we'll just be able to. It goes back to what we talked. We called it a guided pathway, or Ga guided a bunch pathway. of names yeah, for it. But it's I like, like this that. is establishing the parameters this is your for the guided guide. pathway. This is, let, forget about calling it assessment. Here, yeah. this is my uh, guide. guide. This is your guide. Assessment is oh, a little... dude, and we can create a character well, well, that you, guides you. You have a guide, well, you have a hero. No, no, like a, like a, a broad yeah. voice for the network, like mm -hmm. Adult Swim. Yeah. Like that uh, old guy a... on eHarmony. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the old guy. Actually, it's, it's, yeah, Look no, at I, what I, I found, I, an actual tape so, display. I have sorry. video of, uh, for the <laughs> testimonials for, oh, thank you. Was that in there? Yeah, it was in your and art bin. Oh, man, thank that art bin is awesome. Yeah, it's like your Batman <laughs> utility <laughs> belt, you don't even know what's in there. So it's a guide. Yeah. Oh man! I like that much this better than so an assessment. Awesome. Assessment sounds a little yeah, guide. that's better. It sounds it's like a little lost. too confusing. Yeah. Guide, guide fits into the Inspire Educate and Entertain. Love it. Wait, what do we call what do we call the show? A career accelerator. Ah, it's the same I love thing. it. We're I love guide. it. So this is your. Oh really? That's, that's what I call one. the show. Okay. Okay, so we're at the fifty-three minute mark. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop this because I want to do you know ten minutes uh, to help. Show. But after we stop uh, the show, we're gonna cut and then we're gonna come back on live. For those of you who are on the on the chat channel, mm -hmm. we're going to continue to have the conversation a little bit. Yeah, we'll have a post show. Let's, let's have a post show after this. Yes. Ooh, tape. No? I don't need yeah. it anymore, but okay. thank you. I'm going to take it as a gift. <laughs> um, so, Ari, okay. let's switch a little bit over to the logo. Totally. So, again, we're going to continue this process. Again, the show's one hour. It should be three. But mm -hmm. um, we're going to continue this process of the assessment uh, next week. And let's, let's actually make sure we book 
uh, on the development and the developer so that we yep. can actually go so through talk about this. and do Moscow together. And maybe have Jason, ask Jason okay. to come in and prioritize. All right, so Ari, let's bring up the uh, sink or swim it. segment. So we can bring up the sink or swim graphics, even though we're not going to sink or swim this. This is for Jason Perrier, who is a, a very, and, and Jason, a big shout out when you see this on YouTube, who is designing his logo. And what Ari and I wanted to do was to, in sink or swim, we usually tell you whether it's, you know, I, well, I, love, having, I love having like the little like site map stuff like right. <laughs> All right, man, don't change the cameras. You know. We had the site on sink or swim a couple weeks ago. Forums. Right? Yeah, we had it. Let's let's show what we were trying to work at. Uh, it's uh, called Sky Crew, which is his development firm. Uh, if you want to check that out, and uh, he wanted help on the logo. His work is actually good. He has good work. The identity stuff was what we were having, giving him feedback on. And I want to talk a little bit Ooh. about what makes a good logo. Like, here's the logo that we have. It's the only thing on the site that kind of stands out as like, oh Jesus. Yeah, and that, uh, that's one of the things that got it. It got dinged for a swim by almost everybody. Yeah, everybody the, gave it a sink because of that, right? Yeah. Um, but if we can change that, so here's what I know from the 15 years that I've been out of school of being a graphic designer. Um, a good logo is usually simple. Mm -hmm. um, it usually says something about what, but like the group logo is just It a doesn't typeface. necessarily have to tell a story, but it's nice. When it, it, can, it can, it can, it can tell a story. Yeah. So Sky Crew, uh, Sky Crew is his daughter's first name, I think, is Sky. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's her crew, right? Got it. So, Aww. yeah, that's, that's what nice. I said. So, what do we what do we do from? Let, let's bring it up. Let's let's bring up what we have. So, I told him to use trade gothic, just a choice. It's a sans serif typeface. One of the things that really helps is understanding the personalities of different typefaces. And there's a great book that I'm going to Google while we're here live called um, "Stop Stealing Sheep and My Computer Froze." Uh, Stop stealing sheep and learn how type works. Mm -hmm. And it goes That's through and it does. It's uh, written by Eric Speakerman from formerly of Meta Design who is, uh, he's a, a seminal figure in type design and in graphic design in general, get the book. It has sections about personalities for typefaces and you choose, I choose typefaces based on that. Mm -hmm. um, what, would, what would we use for uh, the, the network? It's interesting uh, that you yeah. say, well, go ahead. Oh, go, oh, for, for the network for right now we inherited, or I inherited, was uh, Clavica as the font. Got it. But we've been using a lot more of like uh, League Gothic for a lot of our mm -hmm. stuff. Twist is built off of it. It's, uh, very similar to... I, I like where you're taking it. Like yeah. this bold kind of bold, new identity. Bold, simple, strong. Where, where I want to take it and we're going to start, uh, I want to give a shout out to Janice. You know, he's been watching for a long time and I've been looking at his work and his portfolio. And we had a project, we were on a... In a pinch, we need to help a client complete something. Mm -hmm. um, he's, I think, 10 hour time difference or eight hour time difference. Mm -hmm. And he's helping me do it and he's hitting it on the nail That's every awesome. time. He does, I send him, here's what the, with very little guidance, here's what it should be. Mm -hmm. And he hits it, sends it back to me and bam, the client's That's actually awesome. very happy. And so, as a quick aside, we've had a couple of requests for it. Um, we're gonna build out into both, I think, the producer's program uh, the back channel and also on the website, a listing of all the books that we refer to. Yeah, them. damn it. So Every time I talk about a book, I never list it. We've had a bunch of people ask. Um, on top of having more um, elaborate show notes on the YouTube page, yes. we'll have a, a reference and a resource that you can start going yeah. in and find all this stuff. Very so. cool. Any suggestions? Mm -hmm. you, you deal with advertising uh, uh, and with a lot of big campaigns with big brands. What would you say the, 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 the criteria of some of the best? You know, I mean, look at the This Week in Web Design logo and, and, and the identity that we've done. Why has that happened? Why have we done that? There's thinking behind it. So well, I think it's the clean design. Um, going back to the very first agency that I worked at, which was MNC Saatchi, uh, the whole... Which has great design, by the yeah, way. Yeah, the whole thinking there was brutal simplicity of thought. That's their whole sort of methodology. And I think since the 90s, advertising has been building towards this idea of cutting through the clutter. So simplifying, simplifying, you know, brutally simple thinking. But it's really true. Um, I think if you can strip away all the additions to things. I was going to say, I really like the name Sky Crew, though. That's a really great uh, name. There's nothing wrong with the name. Yeah. It's just you need a, a, a lot cleaner lines. And if you look at a lot of the print ads that are out there, outdoor stuff, you'll see much cleaner lines now. There's a distillation, and thank you for sharing that. There's a distillation of, of, of a story that occurs within the identity. And if it doesn't have that, it's hard to kind of justify just mm -hmm. picking a font and putting it there. Yeah. So what I do when I'm directing it, and look, I'm going to point out our sponsor. You know, we bring up the, the, the uh, here in the back. Yep. So Hiscox Insurance, the, the little uh, thing at the top here, um, mm -hmm. That's beginning to tell us that there's a heritage, mm -hmm. that there's this kind of the symbolic. One of the things that I always do is I go to symbols.com and I begin researching 
the symbology of a particular topic or a particular name. I did it for Live Earth. And the logo ended up being a symbol for Earth that was used yeah. you know, a long time ago, which was just a circle with a little dot in the middle. I took the dot out, and I'm like, wow, that's it. it's a ring. It's simple. But it has meaning, and that's how I sold it to the client. So I, I can already see like some you know, big wooden desk and some you know, very uh, 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 business-oriented you know, folks you know, that are going to take care of me just because mm -hmm. I saw that little, that right. little like, right. press, right? Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. like With the font choice, they're not yeah. making it stuffy. Exactly. They're not making it stuffy, but right. the... So then let's look at this week in web design, and I'll break down the decision making for you, uh, uh, Jason. So two things. One, one of the, the, the keys that I wanted to do, or group school is fine too, if you bring up Ari's camera. Um, the, the reason for that is, there's a couple reasons. One, I, I, there's preference, obviously. But right. for me as a creative and for the work that we're going to do, that we're doing, uh, it has to break the clutter. So it has to be kind of clunky. And I have this whole philosophy of, uh, of, um, of uh, uh, um, it's called uh, elegant, chunky elegant. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. Where it's kind of awkward and you're like, what? Why did you choose that font? Yep. Then combined with something that's a little bit more structured yeah. with really bright colors. I'm doing it so that I can, bam, like yeah. get kind of, then, so, yeah, so it's pleasant. The same, the, then the, the thin lines in the This Week in Web Design, they're actually a very typographic kind of element. Mm -hmm. But they are when you go to school, you know how you have the lines in yep. your in your in your workbook, mm -hmm. and you have to write in between the lines. It automatically. Well, yeah. well, I well think you're not so for long. <laughs> not enough. Yeah. Well, they're getting rid of that. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Really? What? Yeah, they, oh, there's no a debate. Script. No more handwriting teaching. Uh, I, I, that's Fine. a whole other show. Th that's a whole other show. <laughs> but those little things imply that. You're evoking something. I'm not being heavy-handed. Right. Yeah. What do you want to evoke with right. Scott? So what, he, go back to his yeah. site. He has, and I'm doing, by the way, what I do every day at work. This is exactly what I do. I have to mm -hmm. figure out these problems and how to translate the story and the business ideas into the identity. He has that, um, uh, he has that, uh, um, he has that like uh, pattern at the back. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't need my IBGA guys. He has that pattern on the back, you know, like the stripe, the gray stripes, you know. And he's kind of technically oriented, so to me it feels. Uh, and then he has a slab serif for his uh, navigation. Mm -hmm. So there is a sense of, of, and he's in Colorado, I think. There's a sense of, um, and his clients are are around a specific topics. There's a sense of, um, of uh, what I'm thinking here is, is, is almost like a Colorado, not a cabin, but... Or something airy. Something, something traditional and airy, but... So Trade Gothic might not be the right font. You know, we might want to use... What do you think, Ari? Something a little friendlier, maybe? Something a little friendlier, and, and it's his daughter's name. How about, uh, how about like Omnis or something? Try that, try that. Wow, that's that's a big, oh, is that our sitemap or something else? That's our sitemap that kind of grew you a little bit. Fast. Wow, you're fast. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we should just have speed <laughs> tests here. Speed testing. <laughs> there we go. Look at We've that. got a, a like Google blog, everything entering the assessment. We've got the profiles, Elegant. all the extra stuff. We'll upload this to the wiki. Yeah, we'll upload this to bit. the Group School wiki for the producers. So you guys can download the Illustrator file and use it for your own work uh, as much as you want. And all me right, too. we're two minutes Strike over. Through. We can go for We can go for a few more minutes if the audience is okay with that. There it is. So it is in zoom in. Let me see what uh, what, the, what it looks like. Big. Yeah, that's way nicer. Yeah. So it has a personality. It has. It's friendly. So it's friendly. So let's talk about kerning and letting and those uh, kerning specifically within mm -hmm. a, within an element. So Jason, kerning is the spacing between the two letters. So one of the things that you have to do when you deal with an identity, um, you know, I, I did work on the kerning of this week in web design. Some of the other stuff is still not as tight, but but you'll see that the spacing between the letters. The goal is to make it a bit, um, you know, even and and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and and that it feels right. Sometimes letters in the computer typesetting come a little bit yeah. farther away. Right. Good example. Poor the uh, O's is the A and the V and save yeah, the date. Yeah, the A right and now. the V are bad and save right. the date. And also the O's can be tightened up a little bit, but. We'll excuse ourselves since we were working very fast. <laughs> no, but um, I think that's really. But that really knows, good. Matt, it's not wow. It's okay. But but go. This this actually this this some 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 foundries do a really good job, yep. and foundries are the people who make the fonts. Look at that. There's almost you almost need no. It's almost ready to go. Oh, I like the umlaut idea. That's oh, cool. That was I, the way you brought that. up last time. And it looks like a little smile. Ah, you know what? Why don't you take off the? Uh, why don't you take off the the the, the, the sender on the U? Yeah. The, so again, read the book uh, from Eric Speakerman. You know, stop 
stop stealing sheep and learn how type works. Look at what Ari's doing. He's flipping it. Gosh, look at he just the, redesigned the whole moves logo. Are, the moves are surgical. Mm -hmm. They are not broad or they're not, you know, what the mistake that designers make and that you, you're making in a lot of your identities is that you think that the logo or the identity has to be flashy to tell the story and you choose these crazy fonts. Right. Which, was, which is what you did with your at, you know, Sky Crew at. Uh -huh. That's a mistake. Make everything everything very subtle. Look at the Citibank logo. It's two million dollars. It was done mm -hmm. by Pentagram in New York. Uh, Paula Cher admits that she sketched the logo during their first meeting. It's basically well, like when they merged with it, it was Interstate the font, and it was a merger with uh, Travels Insurance. So it's a red umbrella. Mm -hmm. So she put a red little like you know thing the over, little, the over the T. Bam! Two million dollars. That, that's but brilliant, the, but that's what it takes sometimes. Sometimes you have to go through the whole process and realize that. Well, they did go through the whole process so they can justify charging the money. <laughs> the what? challenge also, though, that can come up, I think, is if you're a coder, you know, are you really good at making wireframes? Not everyone has that sort of same design sensibility. Mm -hmm. I know I don't. So making my logo took a really long time, and mm. it's almost like you need to build it so it's full of fluff. And then I, I think the process is one of extraction, just yes, continually yes, looking, what can I take point. out? How right. can I simplify? Yeah. How can I strip yeah. it down? You can see my logo on my Twitter page. Wait, what's your Twitter, Victoria? Yeah, you're on my Twitter. Uh, well, at Victoria oh, Herrick. Victoria Herrick, yeah. Victoria Thanks Herrick, to everyone so. who joined from last week. So. Awesome. Join, join Victoria's Twitter. So you have to redesign your site. So the, the, the answer is <laughs> watch the show. So Ari, let's go Good back idea. to the logo. We, Ari, we, had a, we had a quick question. What was the font? Was that font ominous? Ominous. Ominous. Okay. ominous. What's the type founder? Do you know? We'll find out. Type we'll find foundry. Out. Yeah. There's a lot of really good. So the concept of type foundry is important. It, it really dictates a lot. There's a lot of free fonts out there. What that's I usually the, do. This difference. is what I do when I'm doing an identity. I based on the personality and the brand attributes that we did at the beginning uh, that you guys saw us do. I'll choose the top ones within the personality, mm -hmm. and then I'll look at fonts. Now, how do I know what personality a font has? Um, part of it, Victoria, isn't sensibility. It's also training. I didn't have that sensibility until, and I know oh, that there's yeah. people that I talk about whether they should go to design school or not because they're doing right. this. There isn't necessarily a resource out there that can duplicate the training that you might get at design school yeah. other than this show for web designers. You know, that's very yeah. true. So this is a unique <laughs> opportunity to work with someone and to be coached by someone who does have it and who can share it with you. It's mm -hmm. And it's something that you can pick up. It's just like, you know, a night out in Tijuana. Oh wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That would be a good show. <laughs> that would be a good show. <laughs> Don't say that. Pick, pick, meaning that you can pick it up, not like a disease, right. but you know what I mean. Some, something is building up an intuition, part of it. And part of it is watching trends and knowing when and trends. where to go away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing the classics. Really. Knowing right. the cl looking at what the competition is doing. Right. And knowing, the, the, the key thing is the story though. Right. So that right there to me is already Telling. Look at that. Brilliant. It's mm -hmm. tight. It's a nice choice. And what did we do? We did three things. We chose an interesting typeface right. that's more friendly because it has rounded corners. The reason the difference between sharp, you know, is because a sharp thing, if you look at it from a, look, here's a sharp thing. You know, if you have a logo that, if we come up on the camera, if you have a logo that has a sharp element, it's it's a little it's a little <laughs> aggressive, or you it's feel like you're gonna it get can hurt. Be dangerous, right? So if you go back to Sky Crew, you made it really round because the font is is kind of it's a contemporary font. People haven't seen it yet, right? So that actually used. really adds to it. Mm -hmm. So research the foundries. If you have to pay 100, 200, you know, 150 mm -hmm. dollars, uh, that'd be a great sponsor. A foundry. A foundry uh, would be amazing. It would right. be you, font font, which is uh, the former uh, type foundry that Eric Speakerman was might mm -hmm. be still involved with. So. We should wrap up. Do you want to show it again for one last absolutely, time? Absolutely, absolutely. Here's like the. I have a question for you. Um, yes. Initially, you had you had it italicized. I think was there a reason? Let's why look you at it away italicized. From it? I kind of like it italicized. Actually, there's a certain amount of motion automatically just by italicizing that it. Yeah, you know, you can, you can do both. I think that both might be able to work. I, it the, looks the, more human. It, it, it looks but hand -done. You know what? Take a screenshot of his site and drop it in and erase mm -hmm. what he has. Let's do it. And let's look at both because what what I think is going to happen. Well, what about just having Oops. Sky italicized? Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. Uh, 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 there's a person who taught me something or, or shared something with me that was really funny. Uh, he's one of the principals at North Social. If you check out North Social, it's by far probably one of the coolest, best identities that we've done in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want already to show it, actually. And we should have uh, the guys from North Social on the show. The for a lot of reasons. They're amazing and they're great experts. Their product is really great for uh, managing Facebook campaigns. Oh, wow. Their identity is very cool because the group did it. Mm -hmm. um, and Ari worked on it and Aldo worked on it. They sound like they'd be people. a great guest for this week in social media. They would be a perfect guest for this week in social media. But if we look at the process that we went through with North Social, and by the way, the water killed my computer. Um, so that's why I haven't been back up on IBJ. 
Um, the, uh, the, uh, I, I'm lucky I have, I have another computer on backup that I'm, it's like a NASCAR race. <laughs> um, anyway, I, um, what I wanted to say about the North Social simply was that, not just the identity, but what he taught me was, uh, the pizza analogy. It's a pizza with too many toppings, doesn't taste great. Right. So if we start adding italics and bold and this and that and that, at some point it becomes... Yeah, it becomes about those elements much. versus yeah. the actual story. It becomes like too much. So a good way to think of it, too, is if you go to print it for free on Vistaprint, how's it going to look? Yeah, you know, and there's a, there's, that, you that's a really it, good point. And, and yep. your print materials for, like, your business cards and stuff, and if something's got too much going on, it's going to take way too long, too long to set it into the outline shapes thing you have to do in order right. to get a good print result that that's that's not only good that's it, that's not only a great point uh in terms of how it looks when you print it clients when they look at you and they make the decision to hire you are not hiring you necessarily on how fancy your logo is if your logo is too fancy it might actually scare them away right. as a consultant you want to be fairly clean and neutral if you're a web design, if you're a design focused firm, you might want to have a more unique language. If you're a bigger or broader kind of consultancy that does, you know, a, a broad set of things between marketing, uh, design, and technology, you probably want to kind of have the range be. Racerfish has a great identity and a great site currently. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I'm not digging the site because it's Flash, but. Um, similar in terms of the approach for the logo. So Jason, I want to wrap up, we're 10 minutes over, but I hope that really helps you. Ari's going to show here for the, at the end, like the cooking show, when you pull out the uh, <laughs> stuff out of the oven and you say, yep. bam, here it is. And we're, we're going to send it to you on Google Plus so that you can taste it, quote unquote. Like, uh, don't lick the screen, just we're giving it <laughs> to you. So, uh, that's not what we at need At least when no one else is around. Um, so, so I've got two of those in here. I've got the uh, the font that we picked. So let's sink nice or swim the two. Let's sink or swim the. Yeah, okay. Oh, let's, do it. Wow. let's go full screen. Look let's at that. Let's go full screen yeah, on that guy. Really full screen. Cool. Wow. So one, one I feel better. We changed one element. So so that's that feels so much better. Okay. So now that make it a little bigger, maybe. I'm a I like CEO. I like the blue tone so also. I'm totally executive. I'm always like make Did it a little bigger. Did you say make it bigger? Yeah, I just said make it bigger. <laughs> Number one, be a song about that. There we go. Uh, you know, eh, yeah, it, it, you can see it more. Well, let's see what the other one looks like. The non The other one is just oh, actually, I dropped in a trade gothic because we talked yeah. about it. Yeah, it's, it's something yeah, that's fast. Yeah, I like the other one way better. I like the other one better. Yeah, the, okay. the, the, the lowercase makes it cleaner. The I think it's too squished together the to other begin one is too with. Yeah. Together. That yeah. font in the middle is too is too tight and makes it feel claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's as soon as you change that typeface, it's hard to read. Almost too much copy going on. There's too much copy. It's hard to read. And here's the thing: imagine metaphors that are physical for type. Imagine type is people. Basically, you just crammed a bunch of fat people into like a really small space and they're all like this. That's what your flans look it's like. It's like Disneyland line. <laughs> that's, that's good. Good enough. You think that's a good that's a, so oh, Victoria, we're, we're going to wrap up. We're at 11 11. <laughs> Ari, bring them up, both of them at the same yeah, well, time. Again. Here's like the non italics, not bad. No, no, I like the non italics better. Non -italics yeah, is nice. yeah, is, yeah. So swim on that one. Swim uh, on whether that or not one. we bring the swim graphic up. There you go. Woo! Hey. Jason, thank you again for sending me everything on like uh, Google italics. Plus. Please do me a favor. <laughs> I'm not selling you the damn producers program. I'm saying we can do stuff like this yep. together in the back channel and on the wiki. You're gonna get all these resources yep. for five dollars for ten dollars. There's what are four levels? levels that off the top of my head I can't remember. One, the highest level is a hundred dollars. Yeah, and that's gonna include uh, the a million call, dollar club which is call coming up every very month. soon, every month, um, and then they go down from there. But uh, there's all kinds it of. It starts at five dollars. At five dollars, you can start every month having you know the resources that we're gonna be providing you on the group school wiki mm -hmm. and 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 the amount of uh, uh, contact and communication that we're going to have, like helping Jason. For the cost of a cup of coffee. Yeah. For a cost of a cup of coffee, you're going to get resources <laughs> well, that cost... And they, they, where can they find that out? <laughs> it's, it's a group... Uh, uh, it's a... Uh, uh, sorry, it's thisweekinwebdesign.com. Correct. Thisweekinwebdesign.com. Very simple. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and watching us work here live. Uh, very exciting show today. We even killed my computer. Um, and you saw the death of my computer live. <laughs> so we'll see you next week, and we're going to continue to work here on this show live. Thank you very much for joining us and for watching us work.